As you work with fractions and decimals, um, you know that a fraction can equal a decimal or vice versa. Thinking of like one half, which you know is the same as five tenths, the question is what's the rule for converting fraction to decimals or decimal to a fraction? Okay, now if I have a fraction, well, let's look at that one half. Okay, notice that I have a top number and a bottom number. And remembering that this is a division, so I'm really looking at 1 divided by 2, which means in the form that we're going to do it, we're going to take 2 into 1. Now we know that 2 doesn't go into 1, so we're going to have to convert into a decimal form. The decimal's at the end of the 2, it's at the end of the 1, so I don't move it on the outside, I don't move it on the inside, I'm going to put it straight up. I also can add a 0, so now what I'm actually looking at is 2 into 10, and the 5 is going to go directly above this 0, which tells me that 1 half equals the 5 tenths. The rule for changing a fraction to a decimal, remembering that a fraction starts with a top number and a bottom number. When I, just by definition, this means divided by. So that means that the fraction means top divided by the bottom, which means I'm going to take the bottom number into the top number. Remembering with um, the bottom into the top, if you don't have a decimal, they're always understood to be right here, and it would go straight up from that, and you can add as many zeros as you would like. Let's look at the fraction 3 eighths. 3 eighths, remember, is a division problem. It's 3 divided by 8, which means I'm going to into my division, the 8 is in the bottom, or the denominator, and I'm going to divide it into 3, which is the numerator, or the top. I always think top divided by the bottom, or the bottom goes into the top, depending on which method you are using, whether a calculator or pencil and paper. Okay, 8 doesn't go into 3, so add a 0, and 8 will go into 30, three times. Three times eight is twenty-four. Subtract, we got six left over. Because I have a remainder, I want to add another zero and keep going with the division. Eight goes into sixty seven times for fifty-six. Subtract, you got four left over. So add one more zero because eight does go into the forty and the problem has ended. You do have an option, however, if you don't want to continue, you could have at this point said, okay, I want to just stop this at the end of two places. Because then at this point, I would take the 4, make it a fraction where the 4 is the top of the fraction, the 8 is the bottom of the fraction, which this piece reduces to 1 half, so I could use 30. 375 thousandths, or instead I could use 37 and one half hundredths. I will soon show you how to convert both of those back into a fraction to show you they really are the same. Another example, 3 sixteenths, I'm going to take 16 into the 3, bottom into the top, or denominator into the numerator. I will add a decimal and a zero. So 16 goes into 30 one time. 16 subtracting, I get 14. Bring down that other zero. 16 goes into 148 times for 128. And you're right, I knew that one in my head. You can use pencil and paper if you need to. Subtracting, I'm going to get 12. Bring down another 0. 12 into 120 goes 7 times for 112. Don't be afraid to use scratch paper if you need to. 
one more zero, and it ends because 5 times 16 is 80. Now let's look at, if I didn't want to go that far, I could have at this point stopped it right here. This is the remainder after two places, so I would take the 12 over the 16, which reduces to 3 fourths. I could have used 18 and 3 fourths hundredths, or 1,875 ten thousandths. Both answers are acceptable. Both answers are correct.